So this will be a little different video today. This is Jonathan here, uh, one of the family members, and he's never built a computer before. So I had an opportunity. I wanted to upgrade the old Unraid server. And what Unraid runs, my Home Assistant, ESP Home, Node-RED, MQTT, Plex, all kind of other things in the home, kind of the do-it-all including all of the media storage for these YouTube videos. Cause you know, we just don't want to store all that on one computer. It's in on across a bunch of hard drives. If you're not familiar with Unraid, it's a fairly, I would say user friendly system. It is a paid software, but with that you get easy setup and easy use. And I will say, if you ever done anything with Docker containers, the Docker GUI stuff on it is second to none. So a good opportunity, we've got some parts here. Um, we got the, for the i7 14700K or 14.7K, however you want to say that. Um, kind of wanted to go with the best, what I could find. And we can go i9. Um, it came with a bundle, not the first choice, but um, it, it'll do for what I'm needing to do. We got another with the bundle was also they had 32 gig of DDR5 RAM to throw into it. And just for testing purposes, because what I'm going to do, I have my previous Unraid server and I want to migrate things over to it. But for testing, I've got just an older little Samsung NVMe drive because I'm going to set this up. Unraid does a trial of 30 days. And we're just gonna be able to set this up, kind of give it a little burn in test and see how it works out. And then we'll go through the process of, cause I don't think, have you ever done putting anything on the motherboard or a computer or the coolers or whatever, anything like that? No, I've never really touched the inside of a computer. So this will be a first time for me. And OG is gonna help out a little bit here. And um, I don't know where he can. So you may see him in and out through the video. The other stuff we have, based on some recommendations on Discord, let's move, we've got tons of parts here. It's gonna be parts day, right? Is a 650 watt, it's 80 plus gold. Um, who is this? Uh, C Sonic, I think. And if Enfy, this doesn't work out, then Enfy's gonna buy this off of me, I think. Then we've got the CPU cooler. I didn't go off any recommendation on this one. Um, I've had the one for the Noctua and, but that was like over a hundred dollars. This one was like a third of the price and it, some st stuff I saw in some of the charts, this even did better. So we'll see how this cooler does. It may be a little bit noisier, but it's over there in the corner. So it's fine there. Also grab, you know, some, just some thermal paste, whatever I could find off of um, Amazon that was decent. And then I did this little shuck of a 16 terabyte and that's, if you haven't done the shucking stuff, basically you take those external USB hard drives and you can grab the hard drive out of it and get a good deal. I think I got this off of Black Friday as well for like $200. If you want to find the links to any of this stuff or any of the chapters, you want to just skip past some of the stuff, something that's more pertinent to you, of course you can find all the chapters down below. Just go ahead and you can pull up the block. If you can do is just pull up that, push this little, Push it down, it should go out and across. Okay, there it is. And then you just want to take the little block off. That's just a little, you want to take that plastic part. Does it come out of there? There it is. All right. So some of the CPU slots will sometimes have a notch or an arrow showing which way it goes. If you can see on this chip, you can see you've got an arrow in they call these like the zero insertion where you don't have to like, the old school ones used to have to, you had to take the chip and you had to push it down in. This should just sit on there and lay on there. Mm. Now this one is keyed. So you know with those little keys right there on either side, the little notches, there's one here and there's one here, there's no on the other side. If you did put it in backwards, those notches will not line up. It will not set down in here like this. So then you know it's correct. Um, so you can actually go ahead and close the door. All right. And then pull that little lever down. Yep. And 
right, and, that, and that's it. So then we're ready to put on and look at the instructions. Do follow the instructions. I know sometimes I talk about not reading the, the manual, but do follow the instructions in your cooler because they have a bunch of different chip types and you don't want to screw up on that. Yeah, that would suck if you messed up something up like that. And what I would do is just bump them. Don't put them really tight. Mm -hmm. And then, then come back and tighten. You just want kind of stuff to be snug at first. And then you want to be able to come back and put them, you know, tight or whatever. It's like to get them all started first, basically. Yeah. That's your best thing to do. All right. This is a thick paste. As I put some around, kind of like on some of the other videos, they just dab around but then I'll spread it around my finger and that way I can pull some off if I feel there's too many because I just want like a thin layer on there. And this kind is also, it's non-conductive, so it doesn't matter if you make a big mess, but I wouldn't try to make a big mess. What I do is I take my finger is then, and everybody's hating on me right now, is then pay, run it around all the way to the edges and then I can I try to get an even layer I like to see just enough where you're barely seeing the metal. Yeah, like just like a thin coat, but not too right. thin. Let's see. Let's get that on the... And you don't want to move it around too much. Yeah. Might have set it on there perfectly, actually. So probably before you put the last fan on, you've got the fan on the cooler in the middle, is do verify that you kind of dry fit it, put it up there and see if you could put the memory chips in. Otherwise you do need to put the memory chips in before you put that fan on. Okay. Let's see. Put that on like that. With these you're so gonna put that would be difficult to do because that fan needs to is it right over top of the memory chips so let's go ahead and put our memory in first one thing since we are only using two memory modules always refer to the book on which way it wants you to put when you have one two or four of course four is easy ours it says dim a2 and dim b2 to put them in sometimes it varies so definitely check the manual dim a so we're going to be that one down and that down, and we'll put in the memory stick since we're only going to have two for the 32 gigs. You don't want to push it left or right. You just want to push. Yeah. There you go. All right. So make sure the clips are all in. We installed according to their specifications. And now we can go ahead and put the fan on since that'll block the memory chips. So we've got the fans on, the memory, and... Then we put in our little MVME drive. We're just using one temporarily for some testing. This board does have a bunch of other NVMe slots, but we don't need those right now. One thing I've been debating on is I really don't need the Wi-Fi module. It's an M.2. I could put the Coral in that spot, but I'm not really sure. I could always change it up later. Um, I'll just put the antennas on it and call it a day. I don't know if it's going to use some resources or whatever, maybe, but I doubt it. Some sort of lanes, but I think we'll be good on that. So now we're ready to dig into the Define 7 case and get this thing mounted. All right, so pull the back panel off and we'll just put this to the side. Then this one has a glass panel. We'll pull this glass panel off. I'll leave the sticker on it for now while we manhandle it. So I wanted to look in the back of this. It does have this fan controller at the top on the back here. We can tag in all of our fans. We got all the cool little Velcro things. This is a pretty nice case for what, you know, I really like the one before it. So why not go with the different model and um, power supplies and go under here. And then I, Got to see, we should have the hardware to put in, because this is where all the hard drives go in front of these these fans. These fans are pre-installed. Um, I may not switch them to the Noctua ones, but um, they got, so it's three fans in the front and there's one in the back. 
So in the case, we're gonna put the power supply. We gotta put the bracket on and slide it in. One cool thing, if you can see, they actually have little rubber pads on the side. Nice little touch there to cut down the vibration. And that's the air filter you're seeing there. You feel the little rubber pads and it has to kind of lift up. Yeah, there it is. And you should be able to just screw them, just screw them in there and let it rip. So once you take the case apart to get the top open and the sides off, um, the IO shield is, you're gonna wanna put it in the slot facing out and do make sure you get it the right way. And watch out that wire on that fan. So do make sure that all of your standoffs are in here. This one already had the standoffs done for this particular motherboard, which was pretty cool there. So we'll get ready to put the motherboard in and slowly but surely put it in without dropping it. Yeah, that would suck. All right, get my fingers from under there. And then we'll kind of use the back plate to line it up. You should look through the screw holes and see, and we'll get one or two started. Yeah, this one has to be moved over. And that, that's almost lined up, so. Yep. It's just a couple minor alterations. So let's get a couple screws started. These are gonna be these screws with the uh, bigger thread, so that's there. And um, probably just put one in the front that you can get to it easily. Maybe put one on this side and then one over here. Okay. And just, as long as it's not cross-threading, and just put it like about halfway and that's it. Because the thing is, this motherboard, you, you're always going to want to get them all started before you tighten them up. So then we got the fun part of all the wiring and things to plug in. This is the part that's never fun of trying to figure out where all the little jumper pins, I'm gonna let uh, Jonathan deal with a bunch of those on there. But we'll see how they go, they're not too bad. We look in the motherboard book. We did move the case bracket out for storage. So we should be able to put down like, uh, there's one, two, and then I think we count up to like 11 or 12 hard drives. I did screw up. I got to order my other cases. I should come in in a couple of days. I did not have another 140 fan. I think we'll be fine of putting a 120 and then the 140 and the 140 and see how it goes for cooling. But um, looking good so far. We'll get another deal when we get it wired up. So this is the part I still hate to this day. This stupid power switch, LED, hard drive LED, that you can't just plug in. You gotta do the stupid little jumpers. I wish they would still standardize that because you gotta take the little DuPont jumpers and put them on the pins because I guess everybody does it differently and they still haven't figured out a standardized pin. It's crazy that you've got all the other standardized plugs for like audio usb why can't we just plug in that way it would be just it would just be great we got all the different fans got my one different colored fan in there i'm getting the other hard drive trays but that'll be in the next deal when we do the transfer got most of the wiring done. i didn't have to use the little fan um, matrix controller thing or whatever they call it because this motherboard had a serious amount of system fan plugs on it. I shoved all the hard drive plugs down the bottom until I can get the actual hard drives mounted here, but you can see all the slots are ready to go. Owen didn't, Owen's gonna be jealous. They go nice and slow. Yeah, it has a little pop out filter, just like the other one. I, I did on my other one, I took the door off and I'm not sure I may take the door off on this one. So we're gonna go fire this up. Hopefully it does work and um, then we'll update the BIOS and stuff. Once you get it fired up, always do go make sure and download the latest BIOS and just put it on a USB flash drive, get into the BIOS screen. And you can see we have current BIOS 
is what VA90, and we're going to VA80. Looks like a month or two, like almost two months later. You can go ahead and uh, yes. and BIOS updating and let it rip. So we, there's two more cards we got to put in here. This is that Google Coral. It's this. This is the dual core, and I put this card in here. And then we also have to add to our hard drives is we got the additional hard drive controller to go in here, which we got, I think we got four ports. I do hope I can go find the other cable to add the other four when I need it. Um, I think I'll need one more drive for that. So one thing I do say before you start adding cards into the system, go boot it up as naked as possible. Like even if you're planning on adding GPU or whatever, boot it up. That way you just have the bare bones system. And if anything goes wrong, you don't have to start, well, is it my cards or did I not seat it right or whatever. You just kind of keep it simple. Then start adding stuff. Like right now, I don't even have any hard drives in it. We got everything built. Um, no magic smoke out and uh, most of the wiring done. The only thing is, I guess, the transferring of the hard drives to the system. So what do you think about building your first, really what this is, is a NAS, which is a network attached storage, you know, for a server type deal. But some of the theories are the same for like, we just don't have a, like a GPU for doing gaming type deal. So yeah. what do you think about going through the whole process? So, I mean, it was pretty fun. I mean, there were some tedious moments where you had to work with wiring, make sure cable management is good, make sure everything is running and uh, working properly. But I mean, apart from that, it really wasn't that bad. Yeah, it's they've really made things a lot easier with really being component-based. I know we did actually add a couple extra cards. The only thing it really is, it, you just gotta watch out for some of your wiring. Um, definitely hit up some of the manuals on the manufacturing websites to like check pinouts and stuff mm -hmm. like the wiring. So it wasn't too bad to do. And really just your think your process through on the wiring and um, where you're gonna do everything. But until next time, we're going to load up Unraid on this and transfer our stuff over. Um, hopefully, Jonathan, you'll be back to see that part of it once we get all the hard drive trays in to transfer everything over. You want to see how that goes. All right. Then. All right. Got anything else to say? Nothing else. All right. Well, I appreciate you watching. Thanks to all the YouTube members, Patreon members. Definitely couldn't do it without you. And, yep, y'all know the drill. Press all them buttons and y'all take care.